Hi there, just going to go through a um, little kind of tutorial walk, walk for, walk for if you like, of um, UV pelting inside Maya. So um, this is uh, basically just going to be a sort of um, uh, introduction to the process on quite a sort of straightforward um, character. This whole process really is kind of oriented towards um, creatures really and, uh, and characters rather than kind of um, other or, or you know kind of non-organic objects. So we look, look mostly at um, this process. I mean, the name pelting kind of implies um, sort of taxidermy and uh, cutting skins off, and that's basically what this is. So we're focusing mostly on the the, the body and, and the head of this character here, a little bit around the hands and and uh, and um, you know, the extremities, but um, mostly really to do with the process of laying out the UV, UVs of the body. Um, so I thought what I'd do is just going to start off by showing you um, where we're going to get to here with this process. So this is um, a, a kind of completed version of this, this layout here. You can see that the, the, the kind of UV usage is fairly kind of, you know, doesn't completely 100% relate to um, how, you know, each polygon isn't identically shaped and, um, and, and scaled as it is in, in between 3D space and, and UV space, but it's not far off. I mean, you can see here the head. You know, it's kind of is a little bit bigger than the uh, the body, but that's kind of because, you know, let's say this character we want we want to see it, kind of, you know, from this kind of angle here. You know, you want to be able to have more detail in the face here. You know, spend most time looking at the, the, the face. So, you know, really, it's about trying to make sure that the detail is proportionate to, you know, our demands really. So, um, that's that's the basic idea here really. Um, and um, yeah, we're going to um, uh, use this process of pelting, which is basically involves. Um, Starting with some default projections and then working for a, a few kind of uh, modifications. The whole process for doing this should take about 45 minutes. Um, you should have to get it going a bit quicker. You might want to take a bit longer to get this. Uh, you can see the pieces here, the feet, they're not particularly well laid out here. You could spend a bit more time getting kind of scaled into the shape there. But otherwise, this should be a very kind of reasonable um, you know, starting point for um, a, a decent UV layout. Um, yeah. Um, the other thing, really, just to sort of um, just to kind of take into consideration, really, is the um, um, is the scaling of these pieces here. You can see that the, the pieces, um, some of the detail here is um, you know is consistent with how the detail is spaced on the model. So, if I, for example, if I select um, these um, vertices around here, you can see these bunched up vertices. That they're bunched up in 3D space. They're bunched up in UV space as well. So, this is the kind of thing we want to get to here. We want to get to you know being able to take what is basically a square patch here. You can see when we look around this model, you can see this is basically when we do an extrude, if I could, you know, if I could unsmooth this, you'd be able to see that this is basically a, um, a, a square cut here from an extrude. And, you know, you can always identify these, these, these joins because the joins will always be based around, um, uh, you know, the, the principle of either having uh, quads, you know, when you've got a kind of window, as it were, of points, you have four edges joining every one vertex, or you might have a corner, uh, like the corner of a, if you if you subdivide a cube, if you, um, you know, um, uh, if you were to, um, if you were to um, smooth, apply smoothing to a cube, you'd find you get the corners sort of sticking out, you might want to two places, but that's the case, maybe around here. Yeah, this is this is basically this is the, the kind of pattern we get when you subdivide a cube. And you can see this this would be the corner of the cube there because we have you know three faces joined together there, and so you either have four, or we have three, or you might have five. And you can see here that this is one of those joins where when we extrude something out, you get these these five faces. You can see one, two, three, four, five faces here. So we've pulled this detail out in this direction here, which is kind of given rise to this, this shape here. So you might have a slightly different layout if you've um, done a bit of um, adaptation of the model, but you know, generally if you, if you start off with a cylinder, this is really one of the reasons why we tend to use cylinders. We try to keep edge loops here. It just makes the whole process from selecting and you know being able to subdivide and being able to move edges, edge loops around, being able to select edge loops, you know, to just do this kind of thing, select an edge loop in that direction or that direction, it just makes it easier. And you can see that you know, this doesn't con completely continue the whole way along here because this eye detail here is not essential that it has to, but you know, as far as we can, if we can keep edge loops, it just makes the whole process easier to, s to select and to, to modify really when we have this entire kind of continuous you know, stretch of, of, of faces which kind of loop around. So that's that's really the kind of the reason for working in edge loops. And you can basically see, I hope you can see this, that from about here backwards down to the tip of the tail, it's actually just a cylinder. 
topologically it's just a cylinder. So um, you know this just kind of helps us here. So you know when you're modelling this, really that's why we want you know it's good to kind of start off with something like a cylinder or a cube or you know a sphere or that kind of thing at least. But you know something which is cylindrical, which you can then divide very easily, and we can select these faces here and just kind of subdivide them and extrude them and that kind of thing. So you know when we look at this, you can see that this is actually just following this around here. You can see there is actually sort of four corners, as it were, of this, this face which was originally extruded out here. It's the same as selecting one of these faces and extruding one of those faces out here. You can imagine if you wanted to create an extra limb on the side here, whether you want to do that or not, it's up to you, but you know, if you wanted to create that, it would be fairly straightforward just to extrude those faces out like that, and you get the same sort of effect here. So, um, yeah, um, so that's it for the introduction. Let's kind of jump into the tutorial.